Sometimes it's annoying to have um, an equation that's solely based on knowing the first one and the last one. And so what if you don't know the last term? Well, we came from an equation for the nth term where we had our first term plus n minus 1 times d. And so let's take this and plug it in for a sub n. So it could be n over 2, a sub 1 plus, instead of writing a sub n, a sub, n, a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And just to, for ease, we'll just combine these two terms rather than simplify out. So that becomes 2 a sub 1. So another equation we can use is n divided by 2 times 2 a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And there you have it. So let's utilize this. Um, so imagine we've got a house of cards like these. How many cards would we need for each story? So the first story just requires two cards. If we add a second story, we have this one, two, three, four, five cards. If we add another story, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. And then one, two, three for the base, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And if you've noticed, this is an arithmetic series now because we're adding them together because it's plus three. The common difference is three. So, how many cards would we need for 40 stories tall? Well, so let's generate real quick our nth term just for good practice. a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Our a sub 1 we know is 2. Our n is our variable, and our d is our plus 3 every single time. So 2 plus 3n minus 3. And so our nth term equation, 2 minus 3 is negative 1 plus 3n. So keep in mind what we had been talking about logically. 3 is like our slope, and negative 1 is like our y-intercept, or our zero term, if we were to continue the pattern backwards one. How many cards would we need for 40 stories tall? So that's as if we had negative 1 plus 3n in here, and we're finding it from when n equals 1 to when n equals 40. And so we use our equation that we talked about, n over 2, the number of pairs, and then let's use this one, the one we substituted in for. 2 times our first term, so the number of pairs we have, so number of numbers, so 40 numbers divided by 2, so we have 20 pairs, 2 times our first term, which is 2, 40 numbers minus 1 times our common difference of 3. So 4 plus 39 times 3. So 3 less than 120. 117 equals 2,420 cards. It's a lot of cards. Not to mention it would be extremely difficult to make one that's 40 stories tall. So let's try another one and we'll use the second equation. The same kind of deal though. So we're counting seats in auditorium, in an auditorium, but we don't want to actually count them all. So the first row has 30, second row is 32, 34, so on. You notice that they're adding two each time. And then your friends at the back and they notice that there's 108 seats. So we notice our common difference is 2, our first term is 30, and our last term, a sub n, is 108. Now, in our equation, we have n divided by 2, a sub 1 plus a sub n. Number of pairs, first and the last, just like we did 1 plus 100. 
So number of pairs we have 40 rows. Our first term is 30, but we don't know our last term. And so let's figure out... Oh, sorry, we don't know 40. I know that because I've done the problem. Um, so we need to know what is n. We know that the last one is 108, but how many numbers are there? How many rows of chairs are there? So for that, we're going to use that trusty a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d equation. Again, you can think through this logically. How many times did we add 2 to get from 30 to 108? So, um, n minus 1 times 2. Subtract 30, you get 78 n minus 1 times 2. And then divide by the 2, you get 39. So 78 is the total difference between the first and the last row. And then if you divide them by 2 for each increase, it's increased 39 times. So that means there's actually n is the 40th row. To get from the first to the 40th, you have to add 2 39 times. So n is 40. So now we can put that in there. So 20 times 138 is 2,760 seats. Pretty big auditorium, depending, I guess, on which venue you're using. And that's how we handle adding arithmetic series up. Keep in mind, this stuff makes sense. Feel free to use the equation, but why be forced to use it? Um, think through it logically as well. Good luck.